Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, we are together again for another look into the Red Letter series. And today we find ourselves in Matthew chapter 20, and we're going to pick up at verse 20. Now, what we're going to talk about today is something that will apply to each of us and yet comes very unnatural to us. So let's begin together in verse 20. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. It's interesting how it says she came worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him as almost as if she were buttering him up for the request that she was about to ask. And Jesus said unto her, what wilt thou or what is it that you desire? And she said unto him, grant that these two my sons may sit the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. Now here is a woman who is very familiar with the disciples, each and every one of them, and yet as any mother would, she favors her sons above the others. But we know better of Jesus. There is no favor shown based upon any prejudice, but the only favor that will be given will be upon those whom offer the most, who give the most, who sacrifice the most, who humble themselves most before the Lord who become less like themselves and more like Jesus. And so Jesus answered and said, Woman, you do not know what you ask. Are your sons able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? Now Jesus is speaking of the suffering that he is going to endure. So are they able to endure what I'm about to endure? They're going to leave me. They're going to abandon me in the garden, even from the fear of about what is to be placed upon me much less to endure the torment themselves. And can they be baptized with the baptism that I am going to be baptized with? Now, Jesus isn't speaking of a water baptism here. And so often when we read about baptism in the New Testament, in the places that it's used, we always want to refer to water baptism. But you have to understand baptism, the word comes from the Greek word baptizo, which simply means to be submerged in. And so Jesus says, I'm about to be submerged in punishment. I'm about to be submerged in torture. I'm about to be submerged in pain and suffering unlike any man has ever known. And so they, obviously standing close by their mother, say unto the Lord Jesus, well, of course we are able. Now don't just hear this story as standing on the outside, friends. Put yourself in this position. Because how often do we ask things of the Lord and we even say of ourselves that we are ready, we are capable, we are able. But Jesus said unto them, it is true, you will drink of the cup that I'm about to drink from and you will be baptized or submerged with the submersion that I am going to be submersed in. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. And so Jesus is placing himself in a very submissive role under the father, just as he did when he said, I know not the hour or the day when the son of man shall return. Only the father knows. This was a submissive role that the Lord Jesus took unto the father. But notice verse 24, when the 10 heard it, they were moved with indignation. When the other 10 disciples heard it, they became angry. Now, what we see in this passage is the humanity of men before the infilling of the Spirit. And it's important to point that out. Before the infilling of the Spirit of God, gentleness, kindness, meekness, patience, long-suffering, love, joy, peace, this is the Spirit of the living God whom we serve. And when we're born again, this is the spirit that he places within us so that we no longer operate on the emotions within us, but we operate based upon the new desires that God has placed within our hearts. 
And we see that the disciples struggled with this issue many times. Who would be the Lord's favorite, both in this life and the life to come? Because even in Luke chapter 22, which tells us the story of the Last Supper, and Jesus has just identified the one who is to betray him, it says in verse 23, they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. But now notice 24. There was also a strife, an argument, contention among them. Over what? Which of them should be accounted the greatest? And it's been the heart of the Lord's ministry unto the disciples to get them to see that the first will be last, the last will be first. And to follow the example of Jesus, who came not to be served, but to serve. And so Jesus says in verse 25, as he calls them unto him, you know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority over those who are not great, over the weaker. But it shall not be so among you. Whosoever of you will be great, let him be the minister or the servant unto the others. Now we know that the sons of Zebedee from Luke 5.10 are James and John. And so it's as if Jesus is saying, James, John, would you be willing to dethrone yourself, place two of the other disciples up on that throne, and spend an eternity washing their feet? Well, I can tell you, friends, at this point in their life, they were not. They wanted to be up on the throne. And maybe so did you and I at one time in our life. But as we are filled with the Spirit and we begin to walk in the Spirit, we would gladly give our seats for another. And that's what the Lord Jesus is saying. He says in verse 27, Whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man, even as I, Jesus, your Master, your Lord, and your King, came not to be ministered unto, came not to rule over, but I came to minister, I came to serve, I came to wash feet, and to give my life a ransom for many. This is a lesson, friends, that is so difficult for us to understand because we are programmed in this life to think that as we excel in something, that as we advance and work our way up the ladder, that we somehow become more powerful. But in the kingdom of God, we're not working our way up the ladder. We're working our way down the ladder until eventually we're laying flat and prostrate on the floor before all others around us. And our greatest privilege, our greatest duty in this life is to find ways to serve them, to cause ourselves to be humiliated, realizing that the only reason that we are humiliated in that circumstance is because of pride. If there were no pride that existed, there would be no humiliation. And that's the purpose of becoming a humble people. That the more we place ourselves in humiliating situations, each and every time a little bit more of pride disappears. Till eventually there is no pride left. And that's why Romans chapter 12 tells us, Brethren, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Choosing humiliation, friends, is a sacrifice. And be holy, set apart, pure, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This is what you were called unto. And do not be conformed to the world around you, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so just as we have been programmed in this life to think one way that we need to work our way up the ladder of success, of power and authority, we need to reprogram our minds so that we begin to work our way down the ladder. And as we hit each rung below us, we become a greater servant unto all. And so let me ask you a question by giving you an example of the last rung. You see, if I were to ask you, would you be willing to give up all your reward in the kingdom for another? You may say yes. But let me ask you this question, and I encourage you to ponder it. Would you give up your eternal salvation for another? 
That's a really heavy question, friends. And for most of us, if not all of us, we would have to admit we would say no. And in saying no, that simply tells us that we have not yet quite arrived at the place which the Lord Jesus is calling us to. Because if we truly love others as ourselves, we would gladly give up our salvation for a mere stranger to enter the kingdom. Would it be a heavy price to pay? Absolutely. But when the Almighty says to love others as you do yourself, what do we think that means? When Jesus says, let him who is among you that is great be the servant unto all. And whosoever will be chief among you, who desires to be chief among you, let him be your servant. Exactly to what extent do we think the Lord is speaking? If you knew that you were going to spend eternity in heaven in serving others, would you be looking as forward to go as you do now? Friends, this should cause us to really desire to examine our hearts closely and to realize that we're not as righteous as we think we are that we are not as holy as we give ourselves credit for, and that we are not as much like our Lord Jesus as we need to be or as we should be. Well, I'll leave you with those questions to ponder in your own heart today. And don't gloss over them lightly, friends. Truly consider them, for it is that place of sacrifice and service that the Lord Jesus calls all of us unto. Now may the Lord Jesus continue to perform in you the work that he began oh so long ago. As he wills and until next time, friends, I truly love and care about you. I'll see you on the next video.